Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and red or Jeskai colored control deck and some of the latest additions to the archetype are at 2 mana with No More Lies as a powerful counterspell and Lightning Helix as removal that also gains us some life back which is always appreciated when playing a control strategy, especially when facing aggro decks. And then another incentive to go in the Jeskai colors is our finisher, Zergo and Ojitai, a 5 mana 4 4 with flying and haste and hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. So there's not too many ways to answer Zergo and Ojitai at instant speed other than trying to counter it. You can maybe use an edict effect like Shieldred's Edict, which can get around the hexproof, but there's not too many of those out there. And then whenever one or more dragons we control deal combat damage to a player or battle, we get to look at the top three cards, put one in hand, the rest on the bottom. And and we may return one of those dragons to its owner's hand. So if we expect the opponent to have an answer to Zergon Ojitai in hand that they can play on the following turn, we just pick it back up and then next turn redeploy it for 5 mana so it has hexproof once again so we can keep playing around interaction. And then if we play against a deck where we don't expect the opponent to have answers, of course we can leave it on the battlefield so we don't need to pay 5 mana over and over and that's where it can also truly shine. Now if we do want to set up a board wipe we can always decide to pick it back up after dealing damage so that can also be a nice interaction when the opponent doesn't expect it. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we're kind of your typical control deck with a mix of card draw, removal, sweepers, and other interaction. So starting out at 1 mana, there's the White March, which can deal with creatures, artifacts, enchantments, especially useful at dealing with creature lands as well, since we can cast it for just x equals 0 to deal with them. But uh, we can also pitch some white cards from our hand to help pay for it. And that can also come up in matchups where maybe our sweepers aren't very helpful. We can just pitch them to the march to make it more effective. And then at 2 mana there's a get lost, another versatile answer that can deal with creatures, enchantments and planeswalkers, although the opponent does get some map tokens in return, although we can potentially sweep up all those map tokens using our own temporary lockdown, which is mostly going to be a one-sided sweeper, especially effective against the Boros Convoke deck, which is quite popular. And then at 2 mana besides Helix, we also have two copies of Fires of Victory, which we can cast for 2 mana, but we can also kick it to draw an extra card, which can also be worth it, and can also target Planeswalkers. And then at 3 mana, we've got a little bit of a life gain and card draw with Union of the Third Path. And then we've got two copies of Airtai's Scorn as our kind of hard counter of choice. So in the late game, this can still counter spells, whereas maybe the opponent can pay for the No More Lies. And then I'm playing Scorn over other three mana options, since we can potentially get a one mana discount, which can also be quite relevant. And then I've got a split of one copy of Quick Study to draw to at instant speed, and Memory Deluge, which gets to look at the top X cards, where X is the amount of mana we spend to cast it, since we can also flash it back. So definitely the more powerful card draw spell that gets to dig a bit deeper, the flashback also very useful, but of course comes at a slightly higher mana cost, so it's nice to have a split between the two, so if we draw multiples, we can maybe still cast our Quick Study on three and curve out a bit more smoothly. And then at 4 mana we can also cast our Wandering Emperor at instant speed, so we kind of keep the opponent guessing whether or not we have Deluge or Emperor could affect their decisions. And this can be another nice removal spell that can also help apply pressure with the Samurai tokens. And then we've got a few more sweepers with Depopulate at 4 mana. And then at 5 mana, 1 Sunfall, exiling creatures and maybe helping close out the game with Incubator token. And then in our mana base we also have two creature lanes with a restless anchorage, can also help close out the game if our opponent's low enough, and the map tokens also help. And then we've got a bit more utility here with our channel lanes, Iganjo and Otawara can offer a bit more removal as well. And then we've got a mix of other dual lands. The pain lands here are kind of necessary to cast our two drops on curve. Later we can also just tap them for colorless mana. And then the Innistrad duels that come into play untapped later in the game are of course quite nice for a control deck where we need to keep hitting our land drops since we often want to get to a point where we can play Zergon Ojitai with additional mana for interaction as backup. So then we do need to hit seven, eight land drops often. Also to flashback Deluge. So usually don't mind hitting land drops turn after turn so these Innistrad duels are perfect there and then we've got some of the new surveil lands as well one thundering falls and one elegant parlor can maybe give us a bit more card selection as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw with a balanced hand got a lockdown for aggro scorn as a counter and deluge to start drawing facing blue white so lockdown's not going to be great. Scorn and Deluge should be pretty effective. 
And uh, yeah, play Anchorage. Won't be able to Helix on two unless we draw an untapped red source. Opponent on Esper can now keep up Helix. May as well. And the Great Doors, our opponent's gonna maybe use it to discard and reanimate. Can't stop that. Probably hang on to the Helix for now. And then we have our counter spell available if they go for maybe a uh, reenact the crime. Don't have great answers to artifacts, so this will be kind of a problem going forward. Jace could still be taken out by Helix and maybe a creature land. Definitely annoying, but I think we need to keep Scorn for something more impactful. Opponent's gonna mill immediately here, so they are on the mill plan, I guess. Mills double deluge. Okay, still gonna hang on to Helix. And then now we can pass with both Deluge and Scorn available. Could potentially bounce their artifact with Odawara, but uh, not too worried about it just yet. And then we're probably gonna have to wait until we have a lot more mana before playing Zurg and Ojutai. So we can uh, still keep up a counter in the opponent's turn. Now, if our opponent does go for Reenact the Crime and tries to cast their spell for free, it still counts as the second spell they cast for turn, so then we will get the discount on Airtice Scorn, so that could also come up. Modern Age is fine. So yeah, they're clearly a Reenact deck if they're also playing Beseech. Don't have any Graveyard Hates, so gonna have to fight on the stack. No more Lies. Could be an option. March could also answer an artifact. And there's some cards we don't mind pitching. So we can grab March and our counterspell. And then let's see here. Yeah, I think we just March right now, pitching maybe the lockdown, although lockdown also answers the modern age. So we do have a couple options here. Yeah, let's say we just march right now before they get to untap. I can pitch Lockdown or Helix. Maybe Helix isn't all that important. And then get rid of their artifacts, keep up Scorn. And then Lockdown can deal with the Modern Age next turn, perhaps. So they might go for Reenact the Crime here, discards an Unraveler. And Reenact, so for now we can no more lies. Okay, so cast Lockdown, keep up Scorn. And then next turn we can maybe flashback Deluge. So now they don't have a way to discard to set up Reenact the Crime. Hang on to Odawara just in case. And no need to play Zergo until we have a bit more mana in play. Okay, now Collector's Vault can let them loot potentially. That's fine. Not gonna fight over it. They probably have some removal spells like Fading Hope that they don't mind discarding. Alright, so what do we want now? No More Lies is losing effectiveness pretty quickly, so I might just prefer a land and Lockdown would answer the Vault. So it could go with a land Lockdown or a land Wandering Emperor, or I guess Wandering Emperor Lockdown is also an option. I think the land is fine, and then we'll grab Lockdown to just answer Vault right now. And I still want to go Shields up on Scorn. 
but next turn we can play Zergon Ojutai with Scorn Backup. Now let's say the Heart Cast an Unraveler. Do we let it resolve? Let them maybe cast a spell for free. Opponent Beseeching without Bargain. That seems acceptable. So they might just get an expensive spell that they want to Heart Cast next turn. Still have 26 cards remaining. Can have a look at our graveyard to see what they milled earlier, but... Take our turn. And then we'll play Zergo. Probably best to pick it back up. And then no more lies we can grab. Okay. Another modern age resolves. So that might set up their reenact the crime here, which we're happy to counter. Gatloss could also deal with the modern age. So our opponent discarding Breach the Multiverse. We're not going to tap out here, even if we had, let's say, another Deluge, I wouldn't cast it since they can cast reenact at instant speed. Uh, so I could get lost to maybe bait them into reenacting right now. And they're not going to be able to explore. Alright, we get to untap. Play Zergo. Finding maybe a union or fires if we need to deal with a resolved creature. Pick it back up. And I'll keep up both counter spells just in case. So we'll try this again. Pretty difficult for most decks to interact with. Unless you've got an instant speed edict effect. And then temporary lockdown. Could maybe answer another vault. And we can surveil if we'd like. March seems fine as another all-purpose answer. Do have to watch out for another Jace potentially now that we're down to 20 cards. And we also can't forget about Anchorage as another potential win condition. But for now we'll get in for four. See if we can find another counter spell. Another Zergon Ojutai versus Wandering Emperor. I guess we'll grab Emperor. And then I'll have to discard to hand size here. Don't think that's an issue. What do we let go? A lockdown at this point. And breach the multiverse. No more lies. And then end of turn Emperor. Which in combination with Anchorage can also cross the finish line. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, some good early interaction and a union to draw some extra cards. Starting with Stormcarved Coast, so we can play Waste and potentially Helix on two. And then Deluge was a great draw if we're expecting a grindier matchup against Golgari. Dread Knights, we would prefer to exile. So taking it out here doesn't seem all that great. Now that being said, we do want to cast Union next turn, so we're going to take a few hits in the meantime. So casting a Lightning Helix may not be all that bad. And then keep Fires to maybe kick later. Would have been much better to, of course, counter the Dread Knights with uh, no more lies. Speak of the Devil. So we'll uh, wait and see if we need to counter. If not, we can union. If they just spend two mana to draw, I think that's acceptable. Opponent plays Glissa. That we could take out with Fires of Victory. If I do it now, then we can Deluge next turn. Although we could also union and then Fires of Glissa before it attacks. And then next turn we'll have no more lines available, although opponent does have Cavern of Phyrexian, so we won't be able to counter Shieldred. 
So either way, I think um, I'm going for Union right now. Okay, and then we're gonna wanna Fires of Victory here, unkicked. So at least uh, Dread Knight got dealt with. Glissa can also destroy our enchantments. So it could maybe answer a lockdown if we cast it later. And that's going to be a Dread Knight, which this time I will counter since it uses up our mana nicely. Another Fires. So if I play an Unsap land, we can kick this, essentially dealing 3 damage and drawing a card. I think we're better off going for Parlor and then Deluge. And then um, maybe kick a Fires on the following turn. Now we do have to watch out for Cottage potentially exiling Deluge from our graveyard before we get to flash it back. Bonus got another Dread Knight. That's fine. And find another Deluge. And then Union vs. No More Lies is probably the decision. We're getting to the point where No More Lies isn't all that effective, there's still Cavern to worry about. So unless they slam down some Planeswalker like Nyssa, which sometimes is played in Golgari, or uh, I guess they could also have the Virtue of Persistence getting back creatures, that's also potentially worth countering. Yeah, I guess we'll grab it, just to be safe. Okay, so now... Probably gonna take a hit from the Dread Knights and then keep up all our instants. Okay, Gix, another uncounterable Phyrexian here that we can take out with Fires. And then I have to decide between kicking Fires or casting it for two and casting Quick Study. I think we're fine to just kick the Fires here. I guess upside of Casting it for two mana, so we could still cast No More Lies second main if they have some impactful two drop, but I doubt it. I suppose they could take out their own creature in response here, but it doesn't seem like a great play. So we take three. Now we don't have a great answer to Cottage, and Pona's got two of them now. So I think I prefer playing an Unsamp lane so we can flash back Deluge if needed. If they try and exile it here. So this will be another turn where we kind of sculpt our hand, unless we need to counter something important. And Gix's command returning two creatures. Yeah, that's probably worth countering here while we can. And that's enough for a concession, just uh, too much card advantage coming our way, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. Good balance of removal, counter spells, and a win condition. Opponent on the a landfall deck, which is going to be a tough matchup for a control deck, since they also have some instant speed card draw. Archaeologists isn't the most threatening card, so I don't think it's a must counter here, even though it can fill the graveyard with additional lanes. But uh, yeah, Aftermath Analyst is a bit more threatening. So take our turn for now. And uh, Deluge is great if we can cast it next turn. Alright, Nissa, uh, which we can answer before it triggers, is nice. Could also take my turn to depopulate, but it's not like Archaeologist is a threat. So I think we just fires a victory here. And then hope to draw land for Deluge next turn. Perfect. So hoping we don't need to counter anything so we can draw some cards. All their opponent could do the same, since they're also playing Memory Deluge. 
So currently two fetch lands in the graveyard. If they go for rage x equals two, that might also be worth countering. Virtue strength getting back Nissa. That one's more acceptable. And go for Deluge, finding Scorn, and probably just a land here. So we can keep hitting our land drops. Get Lost is also an answer to their enchantments, but easier to just counter it. Okay, so it's pretty risky to tap out for Zerg and Ojutai, because our opponent could then kind of go off with Nissa. So I think we need to keep our shields up, keep hitting our land drops, maybe flashback Deluge at some point and pull ahead that way. So this is kind of what I mentioned with this being a difficult matchup, since we can't really afford to tap out much. Since once their opponent kind of ramps and puts two or three extra lands in play, it's going to be very difficult to fight over their spells. Okay, so Nissa, we could let Resolve and then take out with March after they get their first trigger, so they will get one more mana, but if we respond to a fetch land, they won't be able to search up an elf or elemental at least. So I think we keep the counter spells. So now we can respond with March X equals three. So they'll have two mana left for the turn. And then hopefully we can counter their non-creature spells like Rage. Virtue Strength get back Analyst now. Yeah, that's kind of a must counter for us. And I wouldn't be able to counter it with no more lies. So that's a tough one. I guess if they don't have an untapped land, we could potentially take it out before they can sacrifice it. For now... I probably have to just pass and then union in the opponent's turn. If I just tap out for Zergon Ojutai, I can hit my land drop, which is kind of nice, but then our opponent gets free rain next turn. So yeah, this is a tough spot. So just have to pass it back. So Analyst with 4 mana available means I probably just have to scorn it here. And then maybe we can no more lies a follow up. All right, land is good at least. So I can still no more lies something if they go for a rage. So I'll just play tap land and pass for now. And of turn deluge. This one's pretty tempting to counter with no more lies since it exiles it. Better point will then be able to resolve rage. So it's gonna be tough either way. So currently three fetch lands in graveyard could have been worse. But it could still play one for turn and then rage x equals four, essentially ramping by four. And then it's gonna be pretty trivial to resolve virtue strength, and another rage would then be lethal. Explosion is acceptable, just draw two. And we're just kind of working towards having the mana to play Zergo and hopefully keep up relevant interaction. Another counterspell could help. Alright, I think we gotta go for Zergo Nojutai and then hope to find an untapped plan to keep up No More Lies at the very least. So keep up Anchorage is fine. And then I have to pick it back up so we don't expose it to another sweeper or removal. Alright, found the untapped land. It's gonna take us a while to actually burn them out since they're gaining a lot of life with those fetch lands as well. So we'd love for them to tap out for a virtue of strength that we can still counter. Gonna be Kellen adventuring first. Okay. If that happens. Opponent draws. 
And there's another fetch lane. And play Kellen. So now I'm probably going to be forced to depopulate before we redeploy Zorganojitai. Or we can just kind of attack into it, I suppose. Make them chump. Although, let's see. I guess we wouldn't be able to pick up Zerg and Ojitai then, so that's kind of awkward. Okay, that resolves. Don't think we Helix face just yet. So, Depopulate will draw the opponent a card, but we'll still have our Counterspell up at least. And then March could be an answer to their enchantments. It's not a great answer, but that's where having some white spells in hand that we can pitch could also maybe discount it. I guess it's probably better than an average draw. Alright. So, the fact that they're holding on to Rage kind of implies that they only have the one copy in hand, otherwise they might have used it as a ramp spell by now. So happy to counter this. And Analyst, we can Helix. So get Zergo in play. See what we hit. I guess just a land here. And then I got a Helix, so we will be tapped out for the most part. And there's Virtue, and still essentially 12 mana left here. Next turn we can march, but uh, it might be too little too late. Rage X equals 7. So if they have another Rage in hand, we're probably toast next turn. We only have the one Airtai Scorn left in the deck, so finding it with Zurgonojitai is not going to be all that realistic. I could go for Flashback Deluge. Which maybe gives us a better chance of finding it. But yeah, we're at 18, so let's say we do exile the Virtue of Strength. Then our opponent still has enough mana to cast Rage X equals 14, so I guess it wouldn't be lethal. Um, so March, let's say we pitch Lockdown. Still gonna cost me, uh, let's see, 8 minus 2 is 6 mana. So that wouldn't leave enough mana for Zurgonojitai, unless we find a white spell that we can pitch to the march. So I think that's the play then. Did not get there. Alright, so we're probably dead to another rage now. I guess, never mind, I could pitch Zergonojitai itself. Which is not pretty, but I guess it beats dying. Alright, fine. So, X equals 7. And then we still have a Deluge to flash back, at least. But now, if our opponents got their own Deluge, they have a lot of mana to work with. So they can likely find another win condition. At least we dealt with double virtue, so they may only have one or two left. And they probably got all the basics out of their deck now. Bones looking at the graveyard, so they might have another a Rage. Or maybe a Shigeki to channel, which is going to be very hard to beat. If they can just get back a million spells. And the channel ability is not something we could counter in the first place. So yeah, without some form of graveyard hate, this matchup is just very tough. But uh, yeah, we still made a game out of it. And yeah, Shigeki X equals 3, getting back Explosion, Virtue, and Rage. So 
That's possibly their last Virtue of Strength, but now Virtue get back Shigeki. Resolve Virtue. That's just uh, too much for us to handle. At least the other two we exiled, so we didn't have to worry about them uh, coming back. So flashback Deluge, but I'm not even sure what we're hoping to find at this point. Found our replacement Zergon Ojitai, which we cannot cast. And a Deluge. But yeah, no more lies. Unlikely to get there when our opponent's got a million mana. So yeah. GG's opponent. Galvanic Iteration to copy their next spell. So this World Souls Rage is gonna get doubled. So I guess there is quite the advantage to march over Get Lost, being able to exile Virtue Strength, so they can get it back. GG's. Let's see what's on top. Couple lockdowns, so nothing too exciting. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Our colors look good. Got early interaction, so we're especially good against an aggro deck. Turn one mountain we don't mind seeing. So we can helix turn two. Could also hang on to it and maybe lock down next turn. And then maybe helix a three drop. Depends what they do here. Scoundrel. Alright, so, yeah, Lockdown looks good here. And since we exile, the Wicked Roll also doesn't trigger. Double Phoenix Chick also would have been nice to exile. So now we can pass with multiple uh, instant speed options available. If Mishra's Foundry gets busy, do we want to Helix it or Wandering Emperor? Kind of liking Emperor since I don't want to get lost just yet. They might have a burn spell to finish off my Planeswalker, but we'll still gain some life in the process. And this is better if we top deck another lockdown to deal with Phoenix Chick. So this is probably a monstrous rage, which plays into our spot removal as well. Alright, counter spell can't hurt. Now we could also animate Anchorage to put a plus one counter on it. Um it's not an awful idea. I would be shields down on Scorn. But then I can just not attack with Anchorage to still have two mana untapped. Yeah, you know what? Let's try it. And pass a turn. So, could Lightning Helix the smaller Phoenix Chick, forcing them to either burn the Emperor, otherwise we get to exile the other Phoenix Chick next turn? Yeah, that seems reasonable. This works out maybe a little worse if our opponent uh, has the burn spell to finish off Emperor, but they didn't seem to have it last turn. Alright, play with fire. Fair enough. And a Kumano. So, we could pass with Anchorage as a blocker now for Phoenix Chick. Uh, if they don't attack, then we can still get lost, maybe. Although get lost, not quite as good against Monorets if we can deal with the map tokens using Lockdown afterwards, because they can actually make use of those uh, map tokens pretty well. And then we'll also have Scorn to protect the Anchorage, just in case. When playing a face-down card, so this is the uh, Code Breaker. Yeah, I think that's worth countering, since that's going to draw them cards otherwise. And then we're just going to get lost to Phoenix Chick, but our opponent has seen enough. 
Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing red mana, but we've got some decent spells we can cast in the meantime. So I'll keep. For now we can keep up March. It does kind of force me to play Odawara when we might want to keep it in hand, so maybe it's worth playing the tap land early. Not too many circumstances where I would march a one drop. Skralv may be one of those circumstances. But uh, we'll see what's next. So blue-white, maybe a banned poison deck. So the life gain from Helix not quite as relevant. So Skralv attacks. I think I should keep up my counter spell. Just take the hits and then maybe end of turn march if they don't present anything. So yeah, definitely a poison deck. And a hive is worth answering, either with no more lies or march, but in this case the uh, counter spell's easier. And then we can pass plan to quick study. Finding a lockdown is going to be important as a way to kind of deal with their creatures without necessarily targeting them, especially if they play a Rot Priest. Skralv keeps attacking, so it kind of implies that we're not planning to play another creature spell. Never mind, Rot Priest, so yeah, that's gonna resolve. And then we're just gonna dig for our sweeper effects, I think, as opposed to going with spot removal. At least that's the plan. They could also have some protection spells, like the Blue March. And our opponent actually counters here. Alright, could main phase Deluge and give them free rain for a turn, just to make sure we actually resolve it, hit our land drops or find sweepers. I think that's acceptable. Alright, found red mana and probably take the no more lies over scorn. So no answer to the rock priests. That uh, doesn't result in more poison. This is also a white spell we can maybe pitch to the march, so it has a bit of extra flexibility. Okay, and then we also have to watch out for the seed core, which could activate at some point, but only works on Skralv for now. So I think we pass the turn. It does let the opponent untap with an extra mana in case they're holding the blue march. Well, maybe we just want to deal with the Rot Priest now, actually, before they untap Skralv. So can cast this X equals 1 on the Rot Priest, and then we'll still have no more Lies and Helix available. So that's the fifth poison. Do they have a response? Serum Snare bouncing their own Rot Priest. So, yeah, we could just counter this. Could counter a Rot Priest on the way back, but not with no more Lies, since they can just pay for it. So I think it's best to just uh, counter here. Also prevents the proliferate. Now there's also Mirex that can start pumping out tokens. So we do need to start applying a bit of pressure here. Yeah, Lockdown would have been a slightly cleaner answer, although I guess Serum Snare still could have interfered. Opponent's casting Augury, proliferate up to 7. And another Hive, yeah, that's the problem. Lockdown would still be a great top deck. And there it is. Fading Hope Bouncing Skralv can just respond and take it out now. So they don't get to scry either. Alright, so we dealt with their threats except for Mirex, which can still make 1-1s. One and at 8 poison, every one of them counts. Duelist also threatens lethal and can be pumped by the Seed Core. So it turns into a 3-2 double strike. So get lost, a good answer. I really want to get the Zergon Ojutai going, but can't afford to play it now. So I guess we main phase get lost, 
before they can draw a protection spell. And then, uh, yeah, it's kind of tricky since we want to get the Zergonoja tag going, but we also need to find cheap answers to their tokens. They can main phase make a token and explore onto it as well. Opponent passes. All right, don't have much of a choice. And just grab a land here. Gonna leave Zergonogitai on the battlefield since I can't afford to pay 5 mana each turn. And if it somehow dies, we can just replay another one. So we're at 9 poison, which means any way to proliferate kills us. Crawling Chorus. Could still be answered by another lockdown, so that's what we're hoping to find here. And then think Anchorage wants to get busy. But then we also need to find an answer to the Mirex token, so it's probably a little bit too much to ask of our deck. Could block the token with Anchorage, so if we draw another lockdown, I guess we're safe. And get lost. Yeah, that's not gonna do it here, is it? Can block with Anchorage and get lost, but that still leaves a third poison creature going through. And Mirex making the difference. Activate Anchorage. But yeah, we were also at a point where any proliferate spell kills us, so we would kind of need a counter spell as insurance. They had a Fading Hope as well. Alright, GG's. Opponent did go down to 9, so wouldn't have taken us too many more turns to close it out. But uh, yeah, they had a good start. And our spells didn't quite line up perfectly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a solid hand. Turn to have a few interactive options. And then turn 4, having the choice between Emperor and Deluge is also nice. Opponent on kind of a blue-white pump spell deck. So, could uh, take that out right now before they can protect it. Could keep up a counter spell, but this will trigger even if we counter their spell as long as it targets. So let's just take it out now. Even though a card like Virtuoso could deal more damage. Next turn they could play Virtuoso and still keep up some protection spell. Opponent passing without deploying a threat is great for us. Although it means their hand is chock full of other ways to enhance their creatures. So now I could main phase quick study to try and hit my land drop. I think we just pass and cast it end of turn just to keep up our interaction. In case they do find a threat here. They might also have their own counter spell but doesn't look like it. So we'll have to discard to hand size here. That's acceptable. Probably don't need both Zergonojitai. Deluge just wants to hit land drops and can make them both untapped. Okay, still gonna hang on to my interaction before I commit Zorgonojutai. So, would once again have to discard to hand size. That's fine, a land can go now. And then end of turn, could either Emperor to start applying more pressure. Yeah, since we have pretty much all the cards we need in hand. Could see a bounce spell deal with the token. And then we'll wait a few more turns before deploying Zergo so we can keep up no more lies at the very least. So for now we'll attack, likely make another Samurai instead of putting a plus one counter on the first one. So yeah, my guess is the opponent just doesn't have a threat to protect 
put their hand as cards like Loron's Escape slip out the back, maybe. Fading Hope bounces a token. So as soon as they find a creature, they'll be able to fight over it pretty well. Twin Blade Geist, okay. So I can tap them out with No More Lies and then exile it with March or I guess just cast a Helix if we don't care about the Disturb. Yeah, I think it's better to fight over it on the stack as opposed to in play because once it's in play they can cast their protection spells for just one mana, which is a little harder for us to kind of fight through. So opponent pays and then we could March so we don't need to deal with the Disturb, I guess. I uh, can do that in my turn as well, and for now Deluge. Finding a land and probably Union over Lockdown. Although Lockdown could be a pretty clean answer to a creature, even though it deals with my tokens right now. Find another Lockdown. So now that we're kind of shields down on counter spells, it's probably time to deploy Zergonojutai. Could still draw into a counter with it. So I haven't decided how my entire turn is going to go. And then do we pick it back up or do we keep it in play? They could have some non-fading hope removal that actually destroys my creature. So I'm probably going to end up picking it up. Strike fast and strike hard. Opponent takes it. And Fires of Victory looks good here. Okay, so we'll pick this up, and then how do we want to answer the Geist? Probably with March, X equals 2 pitching Lockdown. Helix can maybe go face, and Fires we want to kick, ideally. Okay. Trying to leverage our mana advantage as well. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Next turn, the replays are going to tie, and we can uh, clear a path for it pretty easily to cross the finish line. All right, so yeah, we faced a wide variety of matchups here with our Just Sky control deck. Didn't uh, face the Boros Convoke deck, although in theory, as long as we draw Lockdown or one of our sweepers, it's also a winnable matchup as we have a bit of life gain to also stem the bleeding. And then they don't tend to have answers to Zergon Ojutai, so we can even leave it on the battlefield once we get that first attack in. Not too many flying creatures to worry about either. So that should be a winnable matchup, but of course if they have a crazy start with Gleeful Demolition and you maybe don't have that early interaction or maybe a few too many tap lands early, they can still run you over, so never count them out. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.